Jim, playing John Kennedy and Jacqueline Bouvier Kennedy, is, that, is there kind of a responsibility there to playing a man who's been so immortalized as he? <clears throat> well, I don't know. It's, it's what responsibility, well, that's right. Certainly a responsibility uh, on, incumbent upon the actor to try and you know, do it as uh, accurately as you can. And, and I, I think there's also a responsibility of not trying to mimic him because you, can, you can't mimic a legend like that. Mm -hmm. Hopefully what you try and do, at least what I try to do, is give the aura of him, the texture, and uh, go no further. Than I that. see a resemblance, though, that I didn't think I would see, but sitting here I don't. I don't really don't see a physical resemblance. I, I, people say that there's a quality that's, that's somewhere there, but I, physically we really, I think, are very dissimilar. You went to the Fessenden School? In, in West Newton, yes. I, I went there. Uh, for about, let's see, four years, I guess, yeah. Was that during the time of the Kennedy machine and that? Well, no, it was, uh, it was before he became president. Um, I guess he, he was a senator or congressman then. Mm -hmm. um, and I really had no idea about Kennedy at that time. It was only later that I, you know, got to know him as we all did because he certainly affected all of us, whether we voted for him or not. You have a real feeling about quality television programming. Omnibus, your series, was sort of very successful, right? Well, I mean, I just, I don't know if I have a feeling for it. I try to do it, and I try to uh, get into uh, elements of whatever I do that, that, that reflect some quality, because I think it's much more fun if you can do it. Now, I'm not always successful, but I certainly do try. The, uh, the moral majority in the Coalition for a Better Television and all of these groups that are now springing up that are calling for quality programming. Well, have any feelings about that at all? Well, I, I have a lot of feelings. I mean, we're all for better television, and I'm, I, for one, am saying it. But what the structure of that should be, I, I don't think that uh, anyone uh, has a right to dictate to the rest of the country, you know, what the guidelines of that quality, quote unquote, is. Because I think that it's different. People see it from a wholly different aspect, as, as individualistic as we all are. So I, I don't think you can lay down rules that one kissing scene is too much mm. or holding hands is too much or too little. If there is taste involved, and that's what you look for, I think, that anything, any, any subject matter is fair game for, for television or films. But it, I think that's the key, is the taste. Yeah, and there's always that knob you can turn on and yeah, off. And you can leave it if you don't like it. Yeah, have that option. You have, uh, when you were younger, you lost your dad. Yes, right, right? in World War II, yeah. You have four children of your own. Four daughters, yeah. Four daughters? Mm -hmm. Oh, how neat. Do you think maybe you have a, a special appreciation for the importance of a father in their lives because you had that happen to you? Yeah, I'm sure that having basically grown up uh, without my real father, I certainly had a wonderful stepfather, and I still have, do have. But losing your natural father, I think, uh, is something that affects you for the rest of your life. Uh, and you know how very important that is in, in a kid's life. So when you become a father, you, I think, probably uh, try and make sure, one, that you're around. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> and two, uh, that you give it all the input that you know it needs, because you remember when. Does the life of an actor lend itself to being around as a father, or is it the opposite? Well, it, it depends. I, I know that when my kids were little growing up, I got out of movies, because movies took me out of the country, and I got into television series. So I still could act, and I could be home at night. And as they got older, and uh, uh, I was then able to take them with me when I did films, and uh, tried to structure those films in the summer. And so you just have to make up your mind, you know, what's important in your life. And, it, and I tried to do both so that I could be home with the kids, and also I could keep my career uh, moving along as best I could. Everybody knows there's a real special relationship between a daddy and daughters. Yes, there is. But there's yeah. also a real special responsibility, isn't there, with, with raising four women, especially in the Hollywood kind of, of atmosphere, Jim? Yeah, but I think it's the same with, with, uh, with a boy, although I've never uh, raised a boy because I've never had one. But whatever the, kid, the child, I think that there's a special responsibility that, that they need guidance, they need love, they need discipline, they need uh, friendship and they, they need someone who, who really cares about them. And you know, I think if you give them that, that's the best you can do. It's, it's like a, the line out of uh, the Rubiat or Omar Khayyam, I'm not sure which, but <clears throat> as a bow is to the arrow, a child is, is, to the, is to the parent. And once the arrow is launched, the flight is theirs. Hmm. And you have to let them go. After a while, you can't live their life for them. But while you're stretching the bow back, 
that's when they need you. And once that arrow goes, then you've done all you can, and that's the best you can ask for. It's a beautiful thought. Are you proud of your girls? Yes, I am. Yeah. 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 How's I, your I, tennis game? Uh, not as good as I'd hope. <laughs> <laughs> but you play I, a lot, right? I play as much as I can, yeah. I just, you know, I, I didn't play in college because I did all the other silly things that you never do again, like football and hockey and baseball. And, and tennis is such a great game that you can play all your life. I kicked myself and I didn't you know, start earlier. Yeah, but you're playing it now and that's good. How mm -hmm. about another series, Jim? Do you think that's in the future for no, you? No, no. I, it's, I really don't want to get into something for nine months uh, again. And uh, I you just, just did a Burt Reynolds, the Burt Reynolds Theater in Jupiter, Florida, didn't you do that? No, no. I think it was Jimmy Ferentino probably did that. Oh. We get confused often. You do. But how uh, about the stage? <clears throat> no, I really don't have any interest in that either because I, I, the rep repetition of doing something over and over again, uh, I just uh, am not built for. I like the newness and I like the reality too. You know, when you're doing film and 800 uh, Aborigines are chasing you. There they are, you know. I but guess. on theater, you hear the pounding of feet and the proscenium, and it's not. It, it the reality factor is not there. So I much prefer film. But I like to do about two films a year now, and that's it. And that's then, great. Then take a little time. What an exciting life you've led, and you brought us such good things, really. And you've worked with Jacqueline before in Night Kill, right? Yes, Jackie Smith and I did a, a film before called Night Kill, and uh, we, you know, she's such a joy to work with. She's a super nice lady and very talented gal. And, that makes life a lot easier when you're doing film. You know? Amazing the resemblance in her and Jacqueline yeah, Bouvier. Yeah, that's the, right. The little she, that I saw. Yes, yeah, she looks much like my Jackie. Yeah, she well, does. good luck with it. Nice Thank to you. meet you, Jim.